So, today I am going to tell you about Pevensey Museum, why it is awesome, a bit about the history of the place and some of the stories you will learn if you visit. So, um, I'm from Culture24, based in Brighton, but I'm going to take you a bit further along the coast tonight to an area the marketers refer to as 1066 country. Um, so you can see Hastings, you can see Battle, where the battle took place. Has anyone here been to Pevensey before? Any, no one? Okay, I'm going to say what I like then. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Okay, this is Pevensey Museum. Um, <laughs> it is the smallest town hall in England. Dates back to the 13th century, in use till mid-Victorian times. And basically what you see up the steps are two tiny rooms. What you see under the steps are two tiny jail cells for when people were much smaller. <laughs> Approaching Pevensey Museum, you see this, this is a good sign for connoisseurs of tiny, adorable museums, a little hand-painted, slightly wonky Norman soldier. So when you go inside Pevensey Museum, um, there's not much there. It's tiny, but it's packed with stuff, and it kept me and my friends interested for well over an hour. How did they do this? The secret is really enthusiastic volunteers. Um, the second you step in through the front door of Pevensey Museum, they say, hello, would you like to hold this Roman ceiling tile? Oh, oh um, okay, let me tell you why this is amazing. All right, go for it. So, why have they got Roman stuff? Well, Pevensey was once, and Derrida, um, this massive, huge, great big fuck-off wall survived from Roman times, and it still goes all the way around the entire village. Seriously, so you drive and you drive and you drive. This is metres high, and it's still there. Um, in Roman times, it was a Saxon shore fort. Inside these Roman walls was built uh, Norman um, defences just before. So this is poor, unlucky Harold Godwinson. Um, he had the crown of England. He built his wooden defences inside the Roman walls. But then poor Harold, no, oh, he was summoned up to fight Harold Hardrada. That is when, at Pevensey Bay, um, William the Conqueror landed with all his troops, totally unopposed, swept in and um, defeated him. There are the Normans. Well, there's the reenactment Normans. That's exactly what they looked like, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so anyway, William the Conqueror built um, the Norman Pevensey Castle. Um, it's magnificent. It is really impressive. It's colossal. This place was besieged four times, never captured by force, but twice had to surrender because the defenders were starved out. So, I'm going to take you back to the first English Civil War. The Yorkists were at the gate, and I'd like to introduce you to Joan of Pelham. She was the lady of the castle, and her husband was away <coughs> fighting um, up in Pontefract. And yes, she wrote a letter to her husband, and it's the oldest letter ever written in English by a woman. Um, yeah, that is quite interesting, isn't it? But I'm going to try and read you a bit of this and just see the kind of personality that comes across of Joan of Pelham. Do you want to hear the oldest letter written in English by a woman? Yeah! Yeah. This is her letter, my dear Lord. I recommend me to your high lordship. Thank you, my dear Lord, for your comfortable letter you sent me from Pontefract. Oh, very nice. By my truck, I was never so glad as when I heard by your letter that you were strong enough with the grace of God to keep you from the malice of your enemies. If it like that, as soon as you might, I might hear of your gracious speed, which God Almighty continue and increase. Lovely. And, my dear Lord, if it like you to know my fare, I am here, laid by in the manner of a siege with a county of Sussex, Surrey, and a great parcel of Kent, so that I may not go out, nor no victuals get to me, but with much hardship. Wherefore, my dear, if it like you, by the advice of your wise counsel, to set remedy for the salvation of your counsel, and withstand the malice of the shires aforesaid, be fully informed of the great malice workers in these shires, which are so despitefully wrought to you, and to your castle, and to your men, and to your tenants, this whole country have they wasted for a great while. Farewell, my dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> your enemies and still send me good tidings from you, written at Pevensey Castle on St Jacob's Day last past by your own poor Joe Pelham. <laughs> Good for Lady Joan and her powers of persuasion. You will be pleased to hear that her husband John 
did come back in time. <laughs> they did raise the siege of the castle, and it all worked out okay for them. But all those weeks that she spent waiting for an answer to her letter, pacing up and down the battlements of the castle, looking out, waiting to see whether he might come and save her, or whether they were just going to be starved out and have the heads of the dead defenders catapulted into the castle again and again and again. Her ghost still walks the walls of that castle as the Grey Lady. Yeah, not a fascinating story. I've got some more fascinating stories about <laughs> Pevensey, which I shall skip through quite quickly. So, this is the, the story of a Mayor of Pevensey. This picture is of Dick Whittington, Lord Mayor of London, because there are no pictures of the Mayors of Pevensey. <laughs> because it is a village of about 25 people. <laughs> this Mayor of Pevensey was renowned for um, the, the great honour that had been done to him as the Mayor of Pevensey. He was so happy and so proud. And people started, well, they started taking the piss, unfortunately. People started doing special bows and greeting him very elaborately. And he was forced to declare, and I'm going to act this now. Do not doff your hat to me, for though I am the mayor of Pevensey, yet I am but a man. Still a man, ladies and gentlemen. Just imagine that the trembling hand, the soap opera gaze into the middle distance as he delivered that line. Another great character from Pevensey is the local beadle, and you'll notice that he's immortalised in this unconvincing and slightly cracked dummy. <laughs> we love unconvincing, slightly cracked dummies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and this unfortunate beadle was possibly the victim of a spelling mistake, a slight misunderstanding. You remember during Napoleonic times, um, all the hill forts on top of every hill, they'd have a beacon, and if you saw attackers, you had to light the beacon. And he was instructed. <laughs> prevent unnecessary lighting of the beacons, it causes panic. I'll just show you, beacon, beacon. <laughs> Unfortunate beadle attempted to arrest a housewife for burning bacon. <laughs> beacon, bacon, bacon. <laughs> it's a mistake to make. Now, one celebrity moment. Oh, that was a moment as well, yeah. You may be familiar with Harry Potter and with J.K. Rowling's popular, if actually quite irritating character, Dobby, the house elf. Um, where does this idea of Dobby, the house elf, come from? Well, every um, sort of little English place has their own local legend and local name for the helpful pixie who comes in and, you know, makes your shoes and cleans your kitchen or whatever else. Um, in this particular part of 26 country, the name for that local helpful pixie is Mr. Dobbs. Here's Mr. Dobbs in Pevensey Museum. You may think this looks like a concrete gargoyle with artificial eyes sitting in a fire grate with a menacing notice. Here's Mr. Dobbs. Here's Mr. Dobbs. <laughs> no. Feel the horror. You're in a tiny, tiny space of a tiny museum. You see that staring up at you. Haunt your nightmares. Anyway, where was I? Yes. Anyone who works in building conservation and heritage? Give me yeah. No? Okay, I'm going to assume you're all quite stern stomached then about matters of heritage importance. I'm going to take you now forward in history to World War II. World War II, and across 10 6 country, they needed command and observation posts to defend the realm. They needed gun emplacements. Where better to stick a gun emplacement than right on top of the Norman fort? Yes, this is plonking a pillbox right on top of the Norman castle. This has been a whirlwind trip through a thousand years of history at Pevensey, which is a place and a museum you should all visit. I would like to thank my hench people, Hamnet and James, for taking me there and helping me take photos. Thanks very much. Woo! 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 Woo!